Hey everybody, this is Andy Brown again, the head instructor at the Climber School of Real Estate in Orlando, Florida. We are the best real estate school in all of Florida, and I'm going to do another real estate math problem for you to help you out. This is one that's on the brand new January 2015 free practice exam that's on our website at climberrealestateschool.com. This one is number 95. It's an income capitalization problem. And one of the things I've done is I built a trick into this problem because I'm going to show you what the trick is. At the same time, I don't want you to fall for the trick if the state gives it to you, the state exam at Pearson View. So here we go, 95. An income producing property has an effective gross income of $97,580. Vacancy losses are expected to be 10%. Expenses are $47,000. If the price of the property is $350,000, what is the capitalization rate? Let's talk about that. First of all, when you're talking about income capitalization, which by the way, you should know anyways, just for your own investment stuff, you've got to remember this flow. Potential gross income minus vacancies and losses plus miscellaneous income gives you something called effective gross income. Then you take effective gross income, subtract operating expenses, that gives you net operating income, or NOI, and that's always the number that you really want. Also, you have to know this, I over RV. That's the income capitalization memory peg. I is net operating income. V is value, and by the way, it doesn't matter what value, whatever you want it to be. What you paid for it, what you're asking for it, what you sold it for, doesn't matter. And R is capitalization rate. We call it cap rate sometimes. That's just kind of like an internal rate of return to an investor based on the relationship between the amount of money that the building is bringing in versus how much they think it's worth or they paid for it. But let's talk about the problem. So we're going to just fill in the blanks. The problem told us effective gross income of $97,580. Vacancies and losses of 10%. There's your trick. If the state gives you one like that, they're going to expect you to subtract 10% of the effective gross income from the effective gross income, but vacancies and losses have already been subtracted from potential gross income to get this. So this is garbage distracting information. Then you subtract expenses which they give you minus operating expenses, 47000 and you get $50,580. That's your NOI. Now we go over to our memory peg here. If you know two of them, you can solve for three. And I promise you on the state exam, they're going to flat out give you one. In this case, they flat out gave us the value, didn't they? $350,000. They're going to give you enough information to solve for another one, probably NOI, because that's the only one where they can give you a bunch of weird stuff to fill in the blank with and solve it. But we know it now. Net operating income is $50,580. Now I'm going to show you how to use this without having to memorize formulas. Just imagine that there's an equal sign here, and whichever one you want, you have on the end of a big rope, and you're swinging it across that equal sign so somebody else can grab it. You're swinging it over to the other side. In this case, we need R, don't we? Capitalization rate. So we're going to swing that cap rate over to the other side. That means that R equals I over V. Now we just plug them in. I is $50,580. V is $350,000. And we know that because they gave it to us. Top number divided by the bottom number equals 0.1445 or 14.45%, so your correct answer is A. That's the climber school version of how to do these real estate math problems. Keep it simple, don't overthink it. Pass the state exam, go make a million dollars.